Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Let me introduce you our video lecture of our colleague Anna Yashinska Bilchak from uh, Opel University of Technology. Today we are continuous with International Week and the presentation is about Tribe 2.0, the micro community needs uh, of the frames in, of sharing economic concept. If you will have a questions, please try to write it in the questions and answer part and give there your email address because our colleague is a little bit busy and she couldn't be today with us, so we have a video lecture. So please take your time and we are starting. Good morning, my name is Anna Hinska Bilicak and I represent Faculty of Economics and Management of Apollo University of Technology. Today I would like to show my result called Tribe to Zero, the micro-community needs in the frames of the sharing economy concept. Talking about sharing economy, we have to ask some questions. So what exactly the sharing economy is and how we can recognize it. Uh, the sharing economy just shows us how to free our resources and um, the resources understood as resources of private persons and resources of enterprises. But it also is telling how to keep values, any values, because we've got different values in different situation being in different position, but all values which are important for us. For example, as for the private person, what can be important for us? For example, our time is a value, our family is a value. But when we are worker in the enterprise or enterprise owner, we will have just another values, for example, how to earn money, uh, how to grow our career, uh, how to develop the enterprise or just how to stay at the market. It also shows how to be useful for the others and this also uh, for the private persons and for enterprises. And sharing economy also shows how to be glad in our lives and um, during our private life and how to provide profit especially for enterprises. Mm, considering that, we may ask such a questions like, what do I need to cut the grass? Yes, normally we will say, yes, I need a gardener or I need a lawnmower, but do I have to own it? This is the next question uh, which the sharing economy shows us. Do I have to own this thing which I would use? Maybe my neighbor has got something for cutting the grass and maybe he has got the same need. Maybe my neighbor got the need to cut the grass. It, we can see that these are the same or similar uh, needs. And then we both may ask the questions, do we really have to own the equipment and what about the others for example other people living at our street do they also cut the grass and how can we do it maybe we mustn't own something yes maybe we may use the same equipment for example number one at our street on Mondays, number two on Tuesdays, or we can also part, for example, Saturdays for cutting a grass. Yes, maybe it is possible just to use one thing, one equipment for all of these people. And because we've, we've got some equipment, we are using it. What with the rest of time? It's not useful. And the sharing economy says that not too good when uh, some resources are not useful. After that, it's possible to state that sharing economy is the economic model, but uh, from the economics we know that every model is possible, but under some conditions. So what about the conditions for the sharing economy? It has to be possible to share towards co-sharing 
non-used resources. And um, there is no matter if it's for free or with some fee, because it has to be useful for private persons and enterprises as well. We have to also understand that sharing the economy is not a charity, because everyone expects the profit, and uh, not the profit uh, shown as the value in money, but as the value in another, uh, another value, such as, for example, transportation, accommodation, space, uh, value of our skills, of our time, or just material resources. I also show here some companies which realize that sharing economy is the base of their existing, is the base of their business plan just for earning. Yes, uh, this company in each uh, field uh, shown here um, just realizing that there are some value for people and they want to co-sharing it but also they want to pay some money for the enterprise to help to develop it or just to saving it for example to saving time or just sharing space for example or exchanging uh, our apartments our houses uh, for example, for holidays uh, and uh, such a field as transportation, which we uh, almost every one of us know. To sum up that uh, what we were talking about the sharing economy and just to give some kind of um, simply definition of it, uh, it's possible to say that the sharing economy is just a sequence of transactions occurring in the reality of the market economy uh, where the profit plays the important role. So what is the sharing economy sequence, we may ask? Um, and this simple picture, we can see that we can start with sharing, for example, some clothes. Uh, and uh, this uh, picture, we have to treat just like the person from the left is the same person as in the next sequence uh, on the right. Yes, so it means that the person uh, who was last in the previous sequence was the first in another sequence. Why? Um, because this is just a human creation that if we get something, we also would like to share something. So uh, at our sequence we can see that if someone is going to share with us, for example, the clothes, we may in the next part, in a few days or just a few months, however, with the time, we can share, for example, some food, then with some uh, bicycle or, for example, some music player, then with cover, and maybe we can just share so, with our mobile phone, we can share with our car, and then in another sequence we can also see the clothes, that it doesn't matter what we are sharing to, yes? Uh, we've got different goods, different values, and please uh, look at the last row, at the third sequence. There it's seen that people are sharing with the money, what does it mean? We have to remember that economy, sharing economy, is not the charity. So it means that it's not the money for a beggar, for example. Uh, it means that the money in this sequence are, for example, fee for using the house or using mm, the car or using anything. Yes, for example, for some lessons for children uh, or for uh, lending us, I don't know, for example, some kind of tool. We have to treat it in that mean. Yeah? And uh, this is the part of some sequence chain, but uh, it's, there's a need to remember that uh, it begins in some moment, but it is possible that it may never stop. It may stop, yes, the chain can be broken because, for example, one of the person who gets something will never share and we've got no influence for that. 
But it is also possible that this sharing economy sequences chain will never stop. That when it's one started by sharing some clothes, as in our sequences shown here, it may last for really, really long time. Also, at the definition level, it is important to understand that sharing economy is surely not the collaborative consumption, the peer economy, or collaborative economy, or just on-demand economy. It's just another um, economics concept. There is possible to ask the question, uh, yes, we are telling about the sharing economy uh, as an economic concept, but uh, how it happened that just the sharing economy exists as a different economic concept? Uh, so now I would like to introduce a little bit about the evolution of the sharing economy. Uh, which was started exactly by companies seeking easy way to share goods and services. And at this slide we can see um, some foundations uh, beginning at the 1995 uh, till almost nowadays, but also under that please see just uh, that the early beginning it was only goods, then it goes into services or goods and services together because they existed both then and nowadays it evolved uh, into expertise. So goods, services and expertise are possible to realize under the sharing economy conditions. And uh, um, there are also listed some companies which um, started such a goods. Um, and now the sharing economy is multi-faced industry that touches on nearly every aspect of everyday life. Uh, what about the latest development? Uh, it's not simply just to share goods or services. It's also nowadays for sharing expertise. And we can see that founded in 2010 uh, is the author of a global marketplace for learning and teaching online and there's a lot of companies acting in the sector in this sector of teaching or online learning uh, which also um, is connected with the all life learning philosophy with the Lisbon treat and this author enables everyday experts to share these skills with the people, just people who want it. The average instructor earns about $7,000 per month. Some of them have more than a million dollars as these company owners. So we can see that the sharing economy it's a wide market, a wide part of economic market. And what's important, it may act locally, regionally, but as we can see, the expertise may, ask, uh, may act globally. It doesn't matter where is the teacher from. And we also have to remember that the teaching is not only a commercial teaching like university courses. Uh, there is also teaching uh, at the areas or our hobbies. For example, to teach people, I don't know, to sew something, yes, uh, or to draw something. There are also some courses online, uh, even with floristic, with painting, uh, just courses which helps to spend a leisure and free time with a leisure. And this is a wide market which economy, sharing economy, just exists in. The presented sharing economy evolution is strictly connected with the idea of the shared consumption. And there's no need, as at the first uh, questions, 
I asked to own something to consume it. Um, it's just the matter, for example, of technology, uh, where are the lower transaction costs or the matter of economic recession, which we can observe just now in this year, um, which provides some changes in consumption or in consumption structure. And this is also connected with socio-cultural changes. For example, growth of the mutual confidence or need of the convenience. Um, and at this base, there exist some kinds of micro-communities. In the sharing economy or just in the economy, uh, we are calling it tribes to zero. There were provided research by PwC about the sharing economy. They were provided in 2015. And the respondents were asked about the base of the sharing economy. Uh, of course, they didn't know that this is the sharing economy concept, but the questions were formulated uh, just to fulfill it. And 81% of respondents agree that it is more profitable to use another person's good than to own it or just as our own goods. 43% pointed that owning resources as the unnecessary weight for budget. So it's easy um, to understand that we all want to save our money. 57% uh, got the idea or knows the idea of sharing resources or goods uh, and they found it attractive alternative for the property. Someone may ask what are the real benefits from the access to another person's resources instead to own them? At first, it's frugality. And the second, the convenience. And the third, the flexibility. And there are also such benefits as strengthening social bonds, positive environmental impact, and at the end, last but not least, greater pleasure just from interaction. Mm, this is uh, realizing the idea of tribe, the economic tribe. So there is a, a group of people sharing some goods and they know each other better. By that, uh, they make some friendships, maybe, but they also get the pleasure of meeting other people, spending uh, a time with them. Uh, these are so social relations uh, connected with economic uh, exchanges. Why this sharing is profitable? Especially for companies. Uh, we can see some business core values um, which shows that uh, this is the client focus theory. It's also from the other hand professional and ethical at the same time. It's trust and respectful. It's friendly for the company and for the customer, but it also provides integrity. It's honest, what's important at the market, and it has got a greater vision for the enterprise, for the client and the client policy development. Uh, and it is also team focused, but the team understood in few minutes the enterprise team, but in the sharing economy, the team is rather understood as team which inside it are the enterprises and the clients. This is the team, and it's the meaning of team focused value. According to that line, there are five showing economic conditions. Uh, there's the banks that need to create non used resources. Second one is the values such as transparency and authenticity. Uh, and the third one, suppliers have to be respected and supported to make their lives better in both social and economic dimensions. 
cultural clients used to have the benefit from using the goods and services and the fifth condition that the enterprise should be built on the its first market and the decentralized teams which give the membership a great responsibility and the town benefit from the community which they are free. It is possible to point conveniences appreciated by both employers and employees uh, which the sharing economy brings. At first, it's the minimal startup cost and the financing opportunities. Um, we can collect the money for starting or for developing our enterprise in this market, but it also the sum of the money, the value of the money we need to start our working at this market is lower, the enter costs are lower than at the common market. Next is the workplace flexibility, which is important not only for workers, uh, but also for the clients. Uh, what we have to remember that the sharing economy is based on that, that the services Mm, should be reachable, reachable by the client at the moment when the client needs them. Sharing economy also brings stronger communities with better opportunities. What does it mean? That all of us know some people. And when we exist in different groups, we can spread the information, make it faster, and we can find quicker and better the right address for the information, realizing at the same time someone's need. From the economics point of view, it brings extra income for service providers and all these advantages um, brings the availability of goods and services at lower rates. It's important in the market, especially at the recession right now to have got some goods at lower rates and if people are choosing um, some goods or services we know that they are comparing not only the quality but also the cost and possibility to reach them in different time how can we differ than the sharing economy and the access economy. I would like to provide the way by Gianna Eckhart, uh, who is professor and director of the Center of Research in Sustainability at Royal Holloway University in London, and uh, her colleague Flora Bardi, also the professor um, at City University London and Cash Business School. Um, they, in the article, the sharing economy isn't about sharing at all, in Harvard Business Review, provided some kind of correction of the sharing economy concept by leading the access economy concept at the enterprise use. So they said that enterprise do not share at all. They just got profits from realizing sharing economy. They also pointed that there are some companies which do not position themselves as friendly. They do not show them as we are friendly company for you, hello, just take our um, services. They are enhancing some social bonds or based at the social cooperation. These companies show some benefits such as amenities, flexibilities, frugalities coming from the access to resources without the need to own them. They are showing it by the business way and these benefits have primary meaning for the clients. And now as the client we all have to remember uh, about the loyalty program, what exactly they are. As the example, we can see the difference between Uber and Lyft, for example. And a bit explanation about that the access economy is not on demand economy. What does it mean that the 
hierarchization of the organization uh, seems to be the criterion of division what exactly can be defined as the access economy and what can be defined as the on-demand economy. And, for example, Uber, from the one side, is monitoring drivers and restrictively managing the level of the earning. Uh, from another side, is imposing the prices upon its customers. Near desk company is putting at dispersed markets, lateral structures and community networks in accordance with the peer-to-peer -peer idea, uh, realizing the partnership idea. And there still is a question, uh, maybe this is the commercialization of the sharing economy idea, maybe it develops towards commercialization, maybe we will have just new kind of economic currency or maybe we will have the same services providing in another way but it will be not the sharing economy but for example the on-demand economy. I present the sharing economy concept in two meanings sensu stricto and sensu largo. Sharing economy sense to stricto has to meet conditions such as being sharing resources, like shared consumption. It has to be made by private persons for free of charge or for fee. The intermediary has got smaller role inside it and it has to be done with trust and society cooperation. For comparison, the sharing economy sense largo also call it access economy, also has to have sharing resources, but understood not only as the shared consumption. It may be done by private persons, but also by enterprises, because it's for free or for fee. Intermediary has got bigger role inside it, and it has to be done with the frugality and the convenience of the customer. At the early beginning, I would like to present my research base. The aim of the study was to identify the new needs of the society forming the tribes to zero. There were used a methodology to achieve such aim, which was based on three stages. The first of them was desk research, then the dependent interview as the quantitative research, and after that, the primary data analysis. There were shown two hypotheses too. The first one is that after the socioeconomic evolution, which took place during the 20th century, there is the natural need of creating some kind of community, the tribe. Of course, it's the economical tribe. Hypothesis 2 said that there is the conscious need at the beginning of the 21st century of cooperation between the members of such microtribes. Microtribe 2.0, of course. As the result of this research, this was showing the sharing economy as the economical concept. The literature points few milestones which are possible to identify and they show that the definition has spread in the last few years and become the phenomenon known for a wider audience. The first definition, called the sharing economy rather as the gift economy, was defined in the early 90s. Then, sharing economy was pointing as probably the most basic form of economic distribution in hominid societies for several hundred thousand years. Then it was shown rather like non-economic dimensions of economic activities being the base of sharing economy theory. Nowadays it's seen as goods or services which are shared for free or for fee. The Soviet microtribe consists as the microtribe of 19 respondents, 9 males and 10 females. Their age structure is presented in the graph and the 
they're seeing that the biggest growth is between 20 and 29 years, then the large growth also between 30 and 39, much smaller between 14 and 49, uh, few people between 50 and 59 years of their life, and rather more 60 and more years of their lives. The microtype members were examined at the base of the survey and I would like to share some findings. Respondents' preferences were diversified because of gender, age, social and financial status. The results of the survey show that all analyzed microtypes to zero members own some good and they were pointing the frequency of using them. Often are used good by 11 persons, including 4 men and 7 women, rarely only by 1 man. Sometimes the good are used by 4 persons, 3 men and 1 woman, or just when the owner needs to by 3 persons, including 1 man and 2 women. At the same time, 12 persons, both 6 men and women, declare that they use all owning goods. 37 of respondents declare that there are some goods they do not use them at all and they pawned such goods as an electric meat mixer, a hard dryer, the car, women said that only husband drives it, food processor, gardening gears of the type mover, garden tools remaining from the salt pot, furniture from early rented student flat, and so on. Respondents were asked if they know any exchange portals and 68% of them knows that kind of portals and 32% of them do not. It is possible to point simply correlation uh, between the age of the respondents and uh, knowing the exchange portals. Uh, it is seen that younger respondents know them very well and the older ones do not. At the same time, persons who answered, yes, I know some exchange portals, declared that they use them by themselves. It was four men and six women. And only one man said that they do not use them by themselves. The respondents also pointed such portals at Blablacar, Airbnb, Exchanger, which is the local portal. The most popular, of course, were the bigger ones, such as Blablacar, Air, Airbnb, Local portal exchanger was known only by one person who pointed it. According to research hypothesis, the findings allow to confirm both hypotheses, what means that the research allows to state that there are the natural need of creating some kind of community, the tribe, of course in the understanding of economical tribe, and the conscious need of cooperation between the members of that microtribe to zero. For more findings and uh, detailed analysis of the problem, I would like to encourage uh, to the lecture of the article, but now I would like to share some conclusions which are important for me. And the sharing economy can be defined as the sequence of the transactions occurring in the reality of the market economy, where the profit plays the important role. Presented research may be also the supplementing and developing of previously provided ones. More specifically, this study advances current understandings of the nature of sharing economic concept by using the microtrade to zero. It is demonstrated that the research is consequential to the nature of consumption and spreading expenses development. There were empirically identified the areas of good sharing preferences, including pointing of those goods. Also, the aspects of time sharing and time exchange was pointed. This part of research allows to conclude that the time is becoming not only a value by itself, but also is becoming a new nowadays currency. In that meaning, the research points the new trends in economy which may have the influence at both the consumption and spreading of the sharing economy concept. It may be the base for further research as the background for comparative studies or for developed research. Sometimes it's possible to say that sharing economy 
just shows that the more you know, the less you need. Thank you for your attention and please feel welcome for any further scientific actions and projects.